Hello and welcome to my office. I've got to say it feels really weird to be sitting indoors doing a video. It's been quite some time since I filmed a video inside but given the situation in the world just now there's not much choice and it's something that I think we're going to have to get used to for the coming months. Before I start this video I just want to say a shout out to you all just say that I'm thinking of you all and I hope you're all doing well no matter where you are in the world. This year is going to be very challenging for us all and I know a lot of you will be really struggling being stuck indoors and not being able to get out with your camera and do things but we should utilise this time and spend time learning new skills, learning new things and connecting with each other as much as possible online to try and, you know, stop us feeling isolated and alone because I know a lot of us are going to be feeling very distant, isolated and cut off from the world over the coming months. So I want to try and try and do something or do more on my channel to try and curve this and as a result I'm going to start doing sort of weekly challenges or videos or tutorials on Thursdays which I'm going to get you guys involved with. So if you want to get involved in next week's video and potentially feature in it with your photographs stay tuned to the end of this video where I'll tell you how you can do that, where you can submit your images and what I'm looking for basically for next week's video to try and bring some of us together and give us something to do in this mad, crazy and quite worrying times. But let's get on to the official topic of today's video which is how I personally edit my landscape images and hopefully it'll teach you a thing or two to help you with your own editing and basically help you progress in your photography venture. So I use Lightroom to edit my photographs and to showcase how I do it, I've picked a few images I've shot over the past few months that haven't featured in a YouTube video. So they're either from some of my workshops or some of my individual outings. And I'm gonna start with this one here from Bofado Rock. And I'm gonna show you how I went from this in-camera raw file to this image here. So I am the type of photographer who likes to get as much as possible right in camera so I don't have too much editing to do when I go home. Sometimes that's inevitable, you're going to take images in really harsh light that do require a little bit more work done to them, but where possible I like to keep it simple. So let's get cracking on this image and show you the simple little tweaks I make to it to really make it pop and come out of that flat raw file that you saw a second ago. So the first thing that I will always do when I come into Lightroom is I will scroll down to the bottom and click remove chromatic admiration and what that does is any of these lines here in an image where you've got something sort of dark intersecting something light you will just see this image isn't that clear but you will just see there's often like purple going around the outside where the two colours meet and if you click on this that disappears. And it just makes the image look a little bit neater and sharper and just gets rid of that, that colour and that that relates and surrounds the object. So that's the first thing I always do. Then I come up to this panel here, which is the, where the majority of my editing takes place. Now, I usually bump up the contrast a bit, but this image is already very contrasted. So the next thing I will do is go down to the highlights. Now, I tend to remove my highlights quite a bit when I'm editing, especially in images like this, where you've got a highlight here and quite a lot of highlights down here. However, you can still see this image is quite flat, so I will counteract this by increasing some of the whiteness, which just keeps that white, especially when you're photographing waves, you want to keep that, that white and that in the image and keep it quite sharp and true to life in many ways. Another thing I always change is my shadows. I always like to bump these up a little bit just to get rid of some of those really dark areas in the photograph. And so there's not too much shadows and darkness. Again, it just allows more sort of the image to pop in many ways and to get rid of a lot of the very stark contrast and highlights in the image. So for this image, there's not much more I would do in this panel because the exposure, as you can see here in the histogram, it's reasonably flat, it's reasonably clear. Although we've got some highlights a little bit going off here, it's overall quite a balanced image. And then I next would go down to this panel here and I would slightly increase the vibrance. Not too much because you don't want it to look too artificial, but I slightly increase the vibrance. And then I go down here and I play around with a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity. And depending on how I've shot the image, this one's already, yeah, this one's pretty sharp. So I would sometimes bump up the noise reduction a little bit, but this image, because it wasn't a long exposure and because it's, it was shot at ISO 100. 
it's very little grain or noise in the image and I would sometimes bump up the sharpness a little bit. Still with this image here I'm just not 100% sure about it so I'm going to bump this up just a tad more, take this down a little bit more but that's pretty much it. As you can see this is what we began with, quite a flat image as it, as it always is with raw files. This bit here is quite blown out, these bits here are quite dark just with doing these few sort of minor changes, we end up with this image here, which is a lot more bright, a lot more vibrant, and just a lot more striking in many ways. So that last image was quite a basic edit. I did very little to that image, but I'm now going to show you this one here, which was shot during a recent workshop in Lossy Mouth. As you can see, in many ways, this is a lot more challenging image to create and edit because we've got these really interesting clouds here which this flat raw image doesn't quite show off. You've got this overexposed area on the horizon and you've also got these beautiful shapes and lines in the sand here. So this image is more complicated to edit but I also like to keep this image quite basic and simple in the editing and I want to show you how I ended up getting it to this. So again starting from scratch here I begin by scrolling down, ticking the box here, and then I scroll back up, and then I start again with this panel here. Now, unlike the other image, which didn't need much contrast, I really want a bit of contrast in this image, because especially I want to show off these foreboding clouds here. Now, even by pushing up this contrast, it's not quite what I want, but I'm going to show you how I would, how I'm going to make this a little bit more... Um, detailed and atmospheric shortly but I'm gonna I always start by doing these sort of basic tweak to the image here again I'm decreasing the highlights I'm gonna bring up the shadows a bit this isn't for the sky this is more to bring out these beautiful lines and um, shapes in the sand here again I'm gonna bring up the whites a little bit I don't want to overdo it in this image because I don't want this bit to be too overexposed and I'll bring down the blacks just a little bit here. But these clouds still aren't doing what I want them to do. And I will go down here and do a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity, just so that we've got some of that, this being popped out and a little bit more interesting to the viewer's eye. And again, I'm gonna increase the vibrancy a little bit more. Now, I personally tend to use vibrance instead of saturation, because saturation, if you see me bumping this up, it's quite, obvious when you use saturation and it can look quite unnatural in many ways. So what I like to use vibrance the majority of the time, sometimes I mix them a little bit but I never do much saturation. But the good things about vibrance is that it's a lot more subtle I find and you know you're adding a little bit of colour to your photograph but without going crazy like you sometimes do with saturation. So that's all the basic edits that again I'd normally do. A little bit of sharpening, a little bit of noise reduction. But this image still isn't doing what I want it to do. So when I edited this image initially, I used one of these linear gradients. Now on the day I never used a neutral density filter because this cloud came out of nowhere and I didn't have much time to photograph it. So an easy way to fix this is to use one of these in Lightroom and post-processing. Now sometimes if this sky was really overexposed I would not be able to get back the detail that I want. But in this image we've got these beautiful foreboding clouds. I really want them to pop so I'm going to increase the contrast. I really want some texture in these clouds and I really want some clarity. And you'll see now, come off of that, look at that, that's just, in some ways that's a little bit too much actually. Um, but as you can see, it's just that little bit, you know, there's more clarity and texture there and contrast than there was without it, which really adds that atmosphere. Now, you'll notice in the histogram that we're slightly to the left than the right. Now, we probably should try and balance this out a little bit more. However, the most intriguing parts of this image is the sand here and these foreboding clouds. And if I do try and balance the image a little bit more, you can see there's all these clipping of the highlights going on here. And given how atmospheric this image is, I don't want that. So I'm quite happy with this histogram being slightly to the left because it's keeping that interesting foreboding atmospheric clouds and atmosphere in this image. And that's basically it. 
that was quite a quick rundown of how I edit my images. I mean, I could sit here and edit loads and loads and loads of images and there's many that I edit in slightly different ways, but the majority of the time I try and keep things as simple as possible. Now I shoot in RAW, so I'm gonna have to do some editing to my images. I need to put some color, saturation or vibrancy in there. I often need to add some contrast and increase the, the whites a little bit in order to allow the image to come to life and not be flat. But where possible, as minimal editing as I can. I hope you've learned something from these very quick edits here. I wanted to basically show you that I don't do much or spend much time in the editing suite where possible. I do like to get creative and from time to time I will go back and edit old photographs. But initially when I come home, I like to just get the images on the computer, get them edited and enjoy them basically. So I just wanted to show that it doesn't always require hours and hours and hours in the editing suite to get your image edited to a good standard because I know a lot of people out there who get really put off by editing and who really struggle with it. So I hope this video showed you that you can do it in quite a simplistic way. There's a few things you've got to think about and it does take a few years sometimes to train your eye to know exactly what you need to do. But the majority of my images are edited in the same way and I, all, I have an order of doing things which makes it easier. So as like I say, I hope you've learned something from it. But for all of you who were waiting till the end of this video to learn how you can feature in next week's video, let me tell you how you can do that now. So next Thursday's video is going to be an image critique video. So I want you all to look back at all the photographs you've taken over the past few months before you went into self-isolation. Probably let's, let's push it to the last six months. I want you to look back on them and I want you to submit your best or favourite image that you've taken in the last six months. It must be landscape photography related but it can be from anywhere in the world and I want you to, to submit it to my email address info at kimgrantphotography.co.uk and I want them in by midnight on Monday night UK time. So you've got five days to get your image together to edit it and send it to me and next Thursday there'll be a video out where I'm going to pick my best images that you guys have sent in to feature in my channel. Make sure you also send me if you've got it your Instagram links or social media links so if anybody likes your image and they want to check out your other work they can do so and it'll be a good way of us connecting, getting together, sharing each other's skills and expertise and showing off some of you fantastic photographers out there and reminding us all of the beautiful landscapes that we've got waiting for us when this outbreak is over. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. Please stay safe and try your best to get through this tough time. There will be a video out this Sunday where I photograph the lighthouse in Lossiemouth. It's one not to be missed. And I will talk to you again next Thursday and look forward to seeing any of the images that you submit to me. Thank you in advance and I'll see you very soon.